everyone, and welcome to State of the Multiverse, our monthly community update. Yeah, I hate this fucking chair. You hate this fucking chair? Yeah. <laughs> you said it was fine before we started. Yeah, except for I'm half out of the screen because I'm so high up. Oh, do you want to switch? No. No? No, you tilt up the camera. Is that better? Yes. There you go. And our names are backwards. Yes, they are. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, I can fix that just a second. In the meantime, hello to Dragon Love Water. Bo Dinosaur Bob is here. Barbarossa says he'll have to catch us in an hour because he's at work. That's totally cool. And thanks for checking in. Dragon Natalia. Love Water, Natalia, E Song, DM Stretch. Mm. The gang's all here. Awesome. Second Hand Samurai, hello, nice to see you. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna switch the names around here. I can, I can do that. So silly. I don't know why they did it that way, but whatever. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, okay. it's more like us then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got this little space we're trying to crowd into here, so this is kind of fun. Esong says, we are here with the state of the multiverse. The most important thing you should know about the multiverse is that it hates this fucking chair. <laughs> you earn that. You earn that for Yeah, I hate this fucking chair. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Sorry. Well, next time don't say it's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is our community update where we let people know what we're doing over the next month. Kind of chat and yeah. hang out. Shots fired. <laughs> uh, we tease each other. It's fun. <laughs> By the way, community, this is a mature channel. Yes, there is a reason why I marked it as a mature channel. Yes. And that is because we swear. Right? Yeah, we, I fucking swear. We're Canadians, and when Canadians stop swearing, that's when you have to be concerned. If yeah. you're wondering why Canadians are always polite to you, it's because you're Americans and you're make them on the edge. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. no, but see, uh, actually, it is kind of a thing we do with our friends, right? We yeah. tend to be, you know. So I apologize, and you know, uh, I hope we aren't offending anybody. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, and mature is a relative term. That's true. You may have to get old, but you don't have to grow up, right? Right. Right. <clears throat> All right. Growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. There you go. There you go. Boy, am I glad I tuned in when I did. <laughs> ah, we're always like this. This is this is our stream where we get to have a little fun, right? So. Um, I've had fun with my stream all the time. Well, that's yeah, true. Really. Well, I do. People come talk to me. It's fun. Uh, where should we start today? I don't know. What are you up to? What am I up to? What am I up to? Okay, well. Uh-oh. Oh, sorry. Because just a second we read uh, DM stretches. <laughs> Made a boo-boo a little earlier. Made a boo-boo earlier. Took my pasta-ready meal out of the oven. Went to peel back the film layer. And decided to hold the baking tray it was on with no oven glove. Ow! Oh, Ow! That is not fun! I have totally done that. That is terrible. Ow! Yep, dumb. <laughs> You're nice. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's true. It's dumb when we do it, too. Yep. Oops. It's dumb when I do it. It's dumb when you. Second Hand Samurai says, It took me a while to get used to American norms on the insulting friends front. English chat uses a lot of words that are just not typical. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there is a particular four-letter word that starts with C and ends with T that, uh... Um, them's fighting words if you say those in North America with you know that's an invitation to drop gloves and have at it right but uh, in uh, you know our... or the UK you guys call each other that all the time right and that took some getting used to so yeah for me for sure yeah. Natalia says she's a child at heart excellent uh, Natalia's got a book coming out in November you right should, on. You should check it out uh, November 6th. 
is the release. Feel free to post your book trailer in the chat if you would like. It is in Dutch, but she added some English subtitles, and it looks really cool. So, uh, Dragon Love Water says, I spent 10 minutes thinking 5 p.m. was directly after 3 p.m. <laughs> That sounds like me. It's pretty much my, my normal day, you know. Uh, Discalcula, it will do that. You're like, what was the number that comes after four again? What? Yeah. There are numbers after four? Yes, there are oh. numbers after four. I know you smoke a lot of pot, you ignore mm. it. Yeah, okay. Um, Dragon Love Water says, burning hands, occupational hazard. Yeah, um, you work in a kitchen? I've, uh, I worked in a pizza parlor at one point. If it's a, a, a low-wage crap job, I have done it. I'm pretty sure. There, there's not much I have not done. It's a high-wage crap. crap job. I've probably done it. Yeah. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. Natalia says, so I'm, says, I'm going to shoot some content for my YouTube channel. Excellent. Tomorrow. Yeah. All right. So what am I up to? Well, okay. <clears throat> so I guess I'll go to the main screen. I don't even know what uh, window I'm on now. Ah, okay. That's what window I'm on. Well, that's a good enough place to start as any. Um, I am taking on the uh, flash challenge about pollinators, and I have to do it as a natural law. And I've got, like, nothing written, so I'm not going to show you the article yet. What I've got is the title and the fact that it's a natural law. There you go. It's my date. <laughs> but, um... The Star Seeds Tree of Life in the Toy Soldier Saga universe is uh, it, it's a very interesting sort of uh, it's a unique creature. I think something that is very particular to our world. I mean, like you know, it draws upon a bunch of different myths and fantasy novels and <clears throat> things like that. So I can't say it's truly unique, but I don't think that you know, like it's a thing that is really distinctive. So. Um, they have a method of pollinization that I don't think is, uh, nobody else is going to have this. So this is what I thought of when I had that moment on stream, for those of you who watched it a few days ago, where I was like, you know, oh, there's what I'm going to write. So, and it's sort of a spoiler, but it's fun. So I'm going to write about that and... Yeah, I'm excited about it. Hope, um, <laughs> I always end up coming in on like the last couple of seconds with things like that, so probably it'll be all right. So it's the thirtieth, you know. Uh, Secondhand Samurai says, "Cool, I'll have to check that. Is it going to be on the podcast Foxes as an advert?" Natalia, uh, Natalia says, "No, it's for RPG." Three, sire, three. <laughs> three is the number you should count. <laughs> One, three, five. Five is too many. And uh, two is right out, right? Something like that. Oh no, four, four is too many, many and five, five is, is right, right out. out. That was it. Yeah. Do not count as two unless then. Hello, uh, author goddess. Uh, Good to see you. Three. That's right. You know, and all the old nerds in the chat are groaning. Uh, Natalia says that she needs to think about marketing and YouTube is a way to do it. And yes, it is. Um, any tips? Um, okay, I've had a YouTube channel for like 10 years. And over that time, I have accumulated something like 3,000 followers. And they're all there for different reasons because I do a variety of things on the channel. So don't do that. Focus on one thing. There's, a, there's one thing. And then it's like Twitch. Uh, regular content is better, which is another thing I'm not very good at. But it's still uh, worth it to do, because I don't like video editing. It takes forever, and I don't have that kind of time. So for me, Twitch is a much better platform because I don't have to edit anything. I just talk, and it's cool. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's like Twitch in a lot of ways. Regular content gets more attention. You know, focusing on something specific gets more attention. But regardless, it's worth it for authors to do YouTube. And it's uh, authors don't get a lot of people in their channel. They don't tend to have a huge amount of followers. But unlike other forms of social media, you get more return from people who are following your YouTube channel. 
a greater percentage of them will actually invest in your books. This is something that I read because I was like, I should just shut down my YouTube channel. That's why I haven't, by the way. So, and I, now what I'm doing is just uploading and archiving my uh, Twitch stuff too. But yeah. So, all right. So I'm working on the flash challenge. That's one thing. Um, I'm working on manuscripts. That's something else I should show you. Okay. Reload this because I think there's more chapters than when I last looked at this. Yeah, so this is the first novel in the Toy Soldier Saga. It's been in the works for years, and I'm currently publishing it for patrons specifically. Um, it's called Few Good Elves, obviously. And uh, I've got about, well, I've got, I've published up to chapter eight, but I have 10 chapters done. And I'm kind of using this as my final, final, final edit. Final? Final. Final. Very final. Final, final. Yes. One last thing, because there's always got to be one last thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, I think that most writers have a bunch of uh, files marked, you know, edit or final edit, uh, you know, super final edit, last final effort. I don't know. The, the one I'm drawing this from is called 12th edit. <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, so this is the uh this is my big focus right now i want to try to get this done so that i can get the book out and published which is something that i'm going to do early next year mm -hmm. if I, I'm, th I'm thinking spring if i can swing it right um and the thing is that i've been chewing on this is a labor of love this is the first this was my first nano project. This is the thing that spawned the Toy Soldier Saga. I've been working on this for a very long time, and I've been really nervous about it because it's my first thing, right? So it's my baby, and your babies are always kind of ugly, and it's weird to expose them to the rest of the world. So, um, and I've also gone back and forth into whether or not it's going to be traditionally or independently published. Right, so I've decided to do it independently, and World Anvil is why. There are so many tools that are useful for World Anvil to make this a much more interesting, interactive, and you know, I don't know, just a just a better experience overall. So I can I can link to different articles. I can, you know, like it's all right there. And I don't think that any publishing company is going to approach it in the same way that I will. So, um... Let me go back to the screen. Oh, sorry. Why are we staring at your book? Well, I don't know. Why are we staring at your book? You're in a mood today, aren't you? Alright. So, should we go to the downtime stream while I'm talking yeah. now? Okay. So. <clears throat> yeah. So, that's, uh... uh but, I may not... I may not do it in the spring. I may do it in the fall, because I may do spring for the launch of a Kickstarter, right? Because one thing I've learned is that, <clears throat> I mean, like you can, you can self-publish a book and then it just kind of goes into a, a, you know, void that looks a lot like the starscape around the picture here. And nobody looks at it because it's one of a million books published that year, you know, no, no uh, publishing company when you're self-publishing is going, you know, you should check this person out making deals with Coles and uh, chapters and stuff like that. So you kind of have to do your own marketing, which I'm terrible at. But I've learned that it's better if you, uh, you know, put the professional effort into it, right? So professional editing, professional uh, layout, professional art. And the art's a big thing. I have a very specific idea about what I want for cover art. And... The artists that I've seen who do anything like what I want charge a thousand dollars a commission, right? And or sixteen hundred even I saw at one point of one artist I was seriously considering. So there may be a Kickstarter in my future. Just saying, because there's five books in this series and a collection of stories. So and RPG books and RPG books. So that's a lot of money, right? So I don't have that kind of money. So 
we're gonna have to work with that all right so catching up on the chat while i've been yapping uh dinosaur bob says but is it your last terminal ultimate last edit um this is probably the second last <laughs> when i've done this one then there will probably be one more edit by my professional editor our partner jamie right and that will be it right i i hope is it possible to get some feedback on an article uh let's go through what we're doing first and then if we have time sure absolutely Unsubscribe. Yeah. yeah, you bet. Yeah, artists can be expensive, but commissioning art is so fun. I'm just not good enough to do what I want to do with the with the picture. Yeah, probably, she says. Yeah, probably. Yeah, we're just going to kind of do what we came here to do first, and then, sure, right? Because we're here for an hour. Yep. So, all right, so that's my big project. I'm, I'm back to work for those of you who are patrons on doing things that I actually say I'm going to do in my monthly patron rewards. Uh, it's just that summer camp was kind of overwhelming. So uh, I hope you liked all the content. And of course that's, you know, my summer camp articles are available to anybody, obviously. Most of what we do is available to everybody, right? All the world building stuff you know, fiction and the RPG material specifically is for patrons only, right? But otherwise we, you know, make it available to the public. So, um, yeah, so I'm cleaning up those articles. That's another thing I'm doing. So I guess I'll look at that, right? I did a couple of cleanups here in the past few days. What did I do? I'm going to my summer camp category here. Eventually, I'm going to be moving all of these into the appropriate directory, but... Okay, so just after summer camp, I cleaned this one up. This is a bit of a spoiler. Thing right there. Mm -hmm. Isn't that pretty? See? Spin Dizzy! Right. Um, a Spin Dizzy is an essential Magitech item in the Toy Soldier Saga universe. It is, well, one of the two things that makes uh, space travel possible, right? So, Star Metal is a material that is used in the manufacture of Spin Dizzies, and I finished cleaning up this article. I'm calling this done. So, that's a thing. And then I, <coughs> what else do I do? Yeah, I think those are the big ones I've been working on. So I'm, I'm working on uh, summer camp cleanup. That's one of the big focuses I'm going to do over the next month. Switching over to the Weird West, I've also been working at the Desperado article. So it's almost done. It's not quite done. The Sirenscape suite that we're using for the music is called Alien Cantina. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah, this is almost finished. I filled out just about everything else that I want to. And so there's some stuff in there that those of you who are Weird West fans who've read the books don't yet know about the Desperados. Okay. So, yeah. What's up? Uh-oh. Esong says uh, the, that last day alone was two weeks of recovery. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know, right? I, especially for you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was that was a tense stream. That was, uh, you know, that was like watching a, a race where you really invested in the outcome. <laughs> Good uh, for you for getting it done. Uh -oh. Soon we came back online. Buffering. Ah, uh, damn it. Okay. Uh, where did you lose us, guys?
Have a good sleep, Natalia. Nice seeing you. What was I talking about when you lost us? Next time I'm charging a fee to watch you do it. Yeah, no doubt. Will she win? Will she not? Yep. Lay your bets. Okay, give us a quick recap of everything. Okay, so, yeah. Um, in the Toy Soldier Saga, um, I'm working on the novel. I have up to chapter 8 published for my patrons. Our patrons. Um, uh, I'm also cleaning up a, a couple of summer camp articles. I've now uh, finished the one on Star Metal, which is one of the materials used in the manufacture of a spin dizzy, which is an essential starfaring technology. Uh, I've also finished up the Black Arrows formation, which is my elite unit. And uh, fair warning, though, if you look at that one, lots of spoilers, stuff that you probably don't want to know until book two. Um, about two minutes. Okay. Yeah, that's how long we were down for. Okay. DM starts says, I can't remember what you were talking about before. Oh, if it was before we went to World Anvil. I've only been talking about that for two minutes. It feels like I've been talking about it forever, and I'm like, am I no, boring people? No, we were people? just down for two minutes. Oh. Because they heard part of the world. Oh, okay. It was like watching a race, a NASCAR race, one of those with the 30-car pileup in turn <laughs> one. <laughs> Oops. Oh, well. Whatever. Hopefully it didn't register as two different video files. That's such a pain. I hate doing that, bringing those over to YouTube, and I and I hate video editing, right? So I don't want to I don't want to download them and put them together. So I hope it at least you know I'll cut something out later, I guess. Um, yes. So on the Weird West, I was just talking about how I clean. I basically cleaned up the Desperado article here, which you guys can't currently see. Now you can. Right, so um, that's got some stuff in there that some of the, I don't know if I'd call it spoilers, but it's stuff that um, people who, um, even if you've read the books, there's stuff in there that you don't know yet. Right, so, um, DM Stretch says he has three videos he needs to edit for YouTube. And it'll be four after tonight and another tomorrow. I'm just not. I realize that the, you know, the algorithms say don't do that. And if you're looking to promote on YouTube, uh, basically it should, you know, it shouldn't have the breaks in it that Twitch videos tend to. But I just don't have the time, right? So I'm not doing it. And I need to hire someone at this point and lack the money to do it. So this is... Uh, this is what's going on. And nobody has yet come forward and said, I will edit all of your videos for you because I love you. So <laughs> I have had some people who said, I'll write some stuff for you. Sort of. But all right. Um, yes, I'm also still writing Borderlands, which is the, the no, I don't. Okay, so manuscripts. This is the 8th Weird West Chronicle, and this is in raw draft stage. So... Those of you who have been paying attention will uh, realize that I'm on the same chapter I was last time I streamed writing this, but remember that I edit as I go. Right, so that's where I'm at for that. And then on Once Upon a Time in the Weird West, which was the already published variation of this, which contains the first six stories, I'm uh, posting that for patrons as well, chapter by chapter. I am up to, oh yeah, hey, I forgot, uh, that's another thing. Good thing I looked at this because. Yeah, I'm up to about halfway through the second book, Vice and Virtue. 
So that's available to read for patrons. And then th this is a thing. I did a thing. I'm like, I want to show you. See, one of the cool things about doing this on World Anvil is that you can add audio files or video files directly to each chapter that people can look at and listen to, right? So I have been reading my uh, Weird West stories in monthly installments to my uh, $3 plus patrons. And I have now cut a bunch of that out of it into, you know, I've taken out my clearing of my throat and all that sort of thing and separated them into chapters. And I've started uploading them so that you can listen to this in a basic audiobook style format too. It's not really audiobook quality, but it'll do the job. It's pretty clear and uh, it's, I think it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really excited about the fact that this is a thing I can do with this. Back your screen. But I can't move around the things with the mouse when I'm when looking talking, at the screen. You've been talking for two minutes. That's why we lose the stream. Because we're not paying attention to it. DM Stretch says I have a basic, very basic understanding of editing. E Song says, yeah, I don't put things on YouTube. I admire those of you who do. Ah, it's just another way to maybe connect with people. I have it uh, set so that I approve all comments. And you'd be amazed at how that deters trolls. I know YouTube is a cesspool, but they don't come bother me, right? Because they they type their their crap into the void. And then they hit the publish button and it says uh, your comment will be moderated, are you sure, or something like that. And then they don't bother. So it's really, you know, because they do it to get attention and they're not going to get attention on my channel. I just delete their crap. So I don't have enough followers that uh, I have to worry about it. You know, I check the comments about once a month and publish anything worth publishing. So, convenient. Here's my advice for how to avoid assholes on YouTube. Okay, DM Stretch says tomorrow may be a tech day, editing and playing around with my Twitch layout. Yeah, I hear that. That's another thing. Thank you for bringing that up. We are now going to talk about what we're doing with Twitch, I think. Seems like appropriate. So Aaron's been doing some uh, work with his layout for yeah, Ask an Old GM. Yeah, working with Streamlabs and learning to modify layouts. What do you guys think, those of you who have seen his stream recently? Yeah. Yeah. Are you planning on any more uh, changes to the layout oh, so yeah. far? Yeah. Yeah, I'm planning on a few changes before next spring, hopefully. Things I gotta get ready for. Yeah, no problem, of course. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and we're also making some changes to the layout, or we're working on it anyway, for it's our a, game, Toy yeah, Soldiers, Toy Soldiers Old, School, Old School, on Monday nights. Yep. So, what are your plans for that? Well, I'm trying to get the thing working so we can get flashing things when people are talking. Right. Yeah, we're not particularly interested in showing our faces necessarily. Uh, a lot of people are on satellite internet right For, as who are part of our game frankly i kind of lay around in my pajamas on monday <laughs> i'm not really particularly interested in having to get dressed up but people like to know which of the characters are speaking this is feedback we've gotten and we've been paying attention we're just trying to figure out the best way to do it we were going to use foundry but the, what did we run into there there was a problem like we had to have a dedicated uh, the, server or something uh no you have to have uh uh, SSL certificates. Yeah. I don't even know what an SSL certificate is. I do, but we don't have one, and I'm not about to make one. Right. How come, may I ask? Well, because I'm not entirely certain how to make them work. Right. I know how to make them. Okay. So if anybody wants to give him a hand with that, if you know more about it, feel free to DM him, because yeah. we're working on that. Foundry otherwise looks really great. We've been using Fantasy Grounds as our primary virtual tabletop, but yeah. there's a lot to like about Foundry. 
we yeah. just might switch over. If we can get the, um, you know, uh, chat stream thing to work in it, then we definitely will. Especially because of the World Anvil integration. I've been looking at uh, some of the instruction videos on that, babe. It's freaking amazing. Right? It's it's really cool. You can just set it up so that it just imports things back and forth. Yeah. Really handy. Edit our character updates once. That'd be great. But... Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um... <laughs> DM Stretch says, I think I have about six subscribers on YouTube. Um, if it'll grow, people will come. Right? Um, these song says modifying the, the visuals. Right? Yeah, that's that's basically. We're, we're trying to get it so that when one of the characters is talking, right, you'll be able to see a flash or something around them to so you know that's that character. Uh, Bob says you need to be close to the mic. Yeah, she's awful for that. In a way, we talk to yeah Star Wars. Which one of us, by the way? Because it's it, what we do for toy soldiers is we sit in our living room, and there's a table between us, and we each sit in a chair. And I don't even like the chair I'm sitting in. It's a huge ugly chair, right? It's it's designed for our roommate Steve. Okay. It's not for me. Stretch says Siobhan's quite loud compared to the other players. I can fix that. Yeah, okay, good to know. Thank you, this is the kind of feedback we need to hear. Yeah. And this is uh, one of the reasons why we do this stream is so that we get it. So thank you, and we will we can definitely fix that. But yeah, we have this mic, you know, it's a podcast mic. It's uh, a yeah, Yeti. Yeti, right? It's right between- I know what it is. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, we're between, a, it's between us on the table. And if one of us leans in any way away from it, then, you can't hear us and you know i get uncomfortable sitting half leaned over a chair talking at a mic out the side of my face for hours with no if my neck is like this for three hours it will stay that way all night and it hurts so i you know i i don't know i don't know we'll have to maybe we'll just have to invest in headsets and a splitter and do it that way and screw the podcast mic. Then we wouldn't get all the background from... Well, you need the mic and the splitter and stuff like that to get the microphones in there. I need the mic and the splitter? We have a splitter. Yeah. Okay, what do you, what do you mean? You only have one mic. Yeah. Oh, so even if we had this splitter thing which we're using to listen to the headphones, we'd yeah, still only still run on the mic. mic. Well, no, for this. Right, because you can only have one mic. Okay, unless you put in virtual cables and shit like that. Okay, well, I don't know. We'll we'll try it. We'll we'll try to figure something out. Yeah. If anybody has any suggestions, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Talk to Harold's table. Yeah. Good idea. About foundry. Um. Sorry, I can't I'm... send this fucking chair. <laughs> Where are you going? Checking the stuff we've missed in the chat. Um, Eason says, I haven't been able to watch all the videos recently, so no comments for me, but I trust everyone's judgment. DM Stretch says, I need to change my overlay as I'm still using the summer camp one, and that was last month. I've noticed that a lot of streamers are still doing that, and I felt really weird using summer camp, so I made sure to have new stuff set up right away. But... You know, it, we, we haven't done the award ceremony yet, guys, so whatever, you know, no pressure. Um, yeah. Yeah, neither do I, Sable. Changes are so subtle that he's developing her own look. As in, okay, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're referring to there, Bob. Um, okay. Yes, these songs. Aaron needs to go up in his own. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, we, and, you know, yeah, why shouldn't he, right? So. That's because I'm mumbling, Bob. Am I still faint when I'm not mumbling? Yeah, Dragon of Water has no intention of touching YouTube. Don't blame her. Double check your mic input and perhaps increase the gain, suggests the song. Yeah, we keep doing that. Every time we sit down, we keep cranking up the well, gain. Well, the problem with that is that there's a lot of background noise. 
right? And it starts picking up like our partner's computer in the kitchen and, you know. You know, the cat coming in and out in the alley and, you know, the, the neighbor running the leaf blower, you know, so. Okay. Uh, DM Stretch says, tip, if you use headsets, make sure you set it up right. Otherwise, due to the style of mic, they get a bit buzzy and pick up breathing, etc. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lapel mics might help. I have one. Yeah, we got a lapel mic. But... Rearrange the furniture. You don't, uh, you don't know my house. Yeah, that ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> my house is, okay, it's a very small, I, I am fortunate enough to rent a house. But it is a very small house. Um, I I would have to staple the chairs to the ceiling to rearrange the furniture, I think. So that's not going to happen. But okay. we'll figure it out. We'll work on it. Um, the song says, I'm keeping the orange background. Don't care enough to change it. Fair enough. That's because I move my head around when I talk, Bob. He says I'm usually louder than you, but I fade from time to time right. so I look over here and I look at stuff that's going on there you know <laughs> right okay so yeah um the other thing that we're working on in toy soldiers is that I'm trying to get it set up so that there is a podcast and so that you guys can watch the past videos that you've missed mm -hmm. they've all been archived to YouTube except for the first one episode zero which I've been the problem is that we were absolute noobs when we set it up and it was picking up our speaker so everything has an echo i am completely incomprehensible because i am sitting right close to the mic and i sound like i'm yelling in a cavern and it's going hey, 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 hey so you can't understand a word so i actually re-recorded everything i said um and that took some time basically voice acting myself and now what I'm doing is uh, pasting or piecing in what I said in the re-recorded -re version into the regular version because everybody else is at least understandable, right? Um, and Aaron doesn't have that problem because, of course, you know, he was direct, you know, on the direct mic at the time with it, it, it had to do with our team speak setup. But um i'm about a third of the way through the actual file now i hoped to have it done by next week it's not going to happen i probably will have it done by the end of the month the thing is that i have about maybe an hour in the morning to work on it yeah end of september you know th this is our this is what's coming up in september stream right so yeah, we got to work on that, and uh, I'm I am working on it. And as soon as it is up, you guys will be able to catch up on all the other episodes. Hey, Darth Nick. I seriously am considering, and let me know in the chat if you have any strong feelings about this one way or the other. Just releasing everything we've got so far, because like I said, I've got everything from episode one onward. It's just we are on episode twenty-one in the next one. That's right. You know, so uh, it's just episode zero was the introduction to the characters, and I think that it establishes some very important things about who the people are. So I really didn't want to release everything until I had that done. But if you guys would like me to make it available on YouTube so that you can catch up with that, I won't release a podcast until I've done this version, but um, let me know. Let me know. And I'll just you do love it. love audiovisual editing. Yes. Yes. Absolutely adore it. It's my favorite thing in the yeah, world. It's your favorite thing to do. She does all the time. <laughs> uh, it's so time consuming and so frustrating. I just hate it so much. <laughs> yeah. Make a summary video of episode zero or the things we need to understand episode one. That will take as much time as what I'm doing, probably. So yeah. thanks for the suggestion, though. Um, we had a, an episode, what was it, episode 13, 14? That was entirely, we had our mics off the whole time yeah and we didn't know until later because twitch was being particularly difficult that day and nobody noticed right they figured it was just twitch being twitchy so uh we have to do some kind of a summary episode for that which we haven't done yet yeah right and it is good to see you darth nick welcome yeah all right 
So, uh, oh yes, and I found the files that I needed to do the recipes that I had planned for, I, I try to put out a recipe a month, it's just a fun thing I try to do because my patrons like it. It's not an official Patreon reward, but it's just fun. And I misplaced the recipes for the pemmican that I had done, but I found them, right? So that will be coming out sometime in the next month too. I think we've about covered it, eh? As yeah. far as that goes, can you think of anything else we're working on? What's happening on the RPG front right now? Uh, not a whole lot. I'm still waiting on art. Right. Right. Um, and, uh... He has been slowly working on some of the stats for the creatures that he's created, yeah. which you guys have probably seen him do on stream. I keep, yeah. I keep bugging him when he's like, well, I don't know what you guys want to talk about, because, you know, you're asking questions. I'm like, well, work on this, you know? This is a good opportunity to get it done. Sweet roll. Okay, so um, the kitty is like knocking and I've decided that his toll for going out is that you have to see him. So I'm grabbing him to do that. And in the meantime, perhaps Aaron will have a look at uh, Scribe's article. If yeah. If you guys want. Throw your article up in chat there, Scribe, and... Uh, right. Well. And yeah, and if you have any questions that you want to know about things that we have going on coming up, then let me know, right? And we'll answer them. I will get the kitty if I don't destroy the place. Hi. Yes, I know. Oh, wow, that's pretty urgent. But first, you can see all the people. Here's the old man. This is Scooter, for those of you who have not met him yet. It's pretty photogenic, eh? Yeah. You're a good boy. He is a very good boy. He brought two stray cats home, and one is now living here, and the other one is probably leaning that way. He's harder to work, though. He's a tom. All right, buddy. Out you go. He looks huge, but he's really fluffy. He yeah. only weighs about six pounds. I'm five feet pounds. tall, so that could be part of the perspective issue. <laughs> he he is larger, he, but he's not he's not huge. No, he's you're right. He's fluffy. Who's on? Okay. I did not see. We do not see Scribe's link. Scribe did not link. Scribe will have his article up in about two minutes. Okay, that's right. cool. In the meantime, does anybody have any questions? Make for me. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, does anybody have any questions they want to ask us about what we're working on? Any project in particular that they're interested mm -hmm. in hearing more information about? You know? Go. His article's up. You felt that was pretty comprehensive? Well, cool. All right. And the main screen here. Ooh, pretty pictures. Like the art. Ruffled squid. Ah, got a. <clears throat> That's cool. We have an anatomy uh, diagram of a squid. That's great. Ruffled squid eats fruit wrapped in slimy strands of life, helping kelp to grow. Poems by the Seashore by Aaron Diria uh, Kekaris. Or, yeah. The planet of New Deseret is home to the largest number of cephalopod species in known space. As a result, cephalopods have evolved to fill many niches in aquatic ecosystems worldwide. 
The ruffled squid is one such example, facilitating the pollination of underwater plants in its home of the Persian kelp forest. That's actually really cool. You have a tooltip on that? No. Not there. Plants. <clears throat> okay. Physical description. Adult ruffled squids are 15 to 25 centimeters in length, with their mantle taking up two-thirds of their total body length. Ruffled fins extend from the mantle, similar in appearance to leaves growing on the kelp species that exist in their surroundings. The ruffled fins have chromatophores in the skin that change color to match their environment, but are also useful or used in colorful mating displays. That's the word I was looking for earlier, chromatophores, when I was writing my... Uh, uh, Star Kraken article. Thanks Star for reminding me. <laughs> Diet. Ruffled squids feed on the fruit that grows inside the flowers or on the stems of the kelp species in their home environment. When eating, ruffled squids latch, latch onto the stem of kelp trees with a few of their long tentacles, while their arm tentacles reach for the fruit they want. Right. Gotcha. Okay. In this position, the ruffled squid extends its fins, which change color and drift in current to match the leaves of the kelp tree the squid is attached to. Meat. Role as pollinators. The underwater plants of the Persian kelp forest pollinate by secreting a DNA-rich mucus from the flowers of their petals or their leaves. As the ruffled squid eats the kelp fruit, this mucus rubs off on the plant and attaches to the squid's body, or rubs off the plant and attaches to the squid's body. When the squid moves to the next kelp tree, this mucus rubs off onto the new plant, where it results in fertilization. Reproduction. When they are sexually mature, male ruffled squids will weave balls of kelp leaves together with a hollow interior. The male will fill this hollow with fresh fruits collected from nearby underwater plants, disposing of any fruit that goes bad. When a female ruffled squid swims by, the male will flare out his fins, changing their color in an undulating pattern as he faces the female and dances vertically in front of her. If successful, the, the dance and light show have a hypnotic effect on the female, who follows the backward swimming male to his nest. There she will inspect the quality of his nest and fruit. If they are to her standard, the female will enter the nest and signal willingness to mate by changing her color to a bright orange. Neat. Convenient. Wouldn't it be convenient if human cycles were this simple? I'm just saying. <laughs> After a female and male ruffled squid mate, the female lays her now fertilized eggs inside the nest prepared by the male. These eggs, usually around 50, hatch within a four to five within a uh, four to five weeks. So you've got a minor typo there, scribe. One or the other, right? Uh, a four to five week, or within four to five weeks, probably the second. And the young remain in the nest for seven to eight weeks until they grow to the point of being crowded. At which point they leave to live life on their own. That's a very long sentence. You might want to break up a bit, but cool. During their nest period, the young are guarded by one parent at all times, while the other collects fruit and mucus for the hatchlings to eat. That is awesome, and I think that's probably really unique. I don't think anybody else is going to have anything quite like that. No. Because who thinks about what goes on under the water, right? Under the sea. You know, I, I love these uh, particularly challenging challenges, the ones that you are things you don't really think about all the time because, you know, who, who thinks about the pollinization project, right? Or, or process, usually. And then when people are asked to think about it, they think, oh, well, you know, bees, right? You know, and... They forget about grasshoppers, they forget about flies, they forget about... You know, there's a lot of things. That birds, butterflies. Birds, butterflies. Um, you know, animal poop. All kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah, E Song says, mainly because as a player, she knows many of your strengths and things that she loves as a player. What was that connection to? Oh, my only question is what things uh, Sable would ask Aaron on his GM stream. <laughs> um, am I feeling snarky today? Um, uh, we sometimes get into the into arguments about technicalities of things. She's always wrong. No, no, I'm mm -hmm. not always wrong. See, because sometimes sure. he fails to give me a key piece of information, right? Is what it is. We had one of these last night in our kind of, you know, or the night before last in our kind of house game. Um, he, he had like a, a, a flyover with like, you know, they have bombs. We have 
no aerial craft in this space. We have mechs we have to try to defend with. I know how fast they move. I know the only way we're going to do it is basically one shot with our missiles as soon as the thing appears on our radar, basically. And that's it, right? And what he didn't tell me was that this was sort of a narrative thing. It wasn't actually intended as a fight, right? So I was asking all kinds of technical questions about, okay, well, what's the weather pattern? What's the layout of the ravine? What's the... Yeah! <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm trying to strategize, right? Because I, I know that's how it's going to be done. And he's like, what? what you know? So it was, so I, I would, uh, I don't know. What, what, what would I ask him? Uh, I don't know why he's so closely guarded with information sometimes. Yeah. Because that, that tends to be where we run into things. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a pain in the ass player that way, by the way. Because I wanna, I wanna, I wanna think my way around everything. I am in, I am there for the puzzle, right, and the challenge. I'm not particularly interested in the treasure. I could care less, right? I'm not particularly thrilled by leveling up. This just means paperwork, as far as I'm concerned, usually, right? I, I like to be able to take on whatever we're gonna take on. But as a player, I yeah, yeah you can't motivate me by that stuff, right? I'm not interested in that. What I want is role play and puzzles for my brain. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was as uh, Esong said, kind of an Elven Shoes article for me at first, says Scribe of Nakati, but I had fun with it. Yeah, because you're right. Who thinks about pollinization, right? But it's actually, it can be pretty important. The article I'm going to write is actually really important to how my world works, and it's even a, a subplot later on. That, this is why I say it's a bit of a spoiler, but, you know, it's it's kind of essential to the functioning of the universe, so not necessarily, right? Um, yeah, and I really love the counterculture challenge, right, for the same reason, because people never think about that. But for every culture, there will be people who don't necessarily agree with the overculture. And if you think about them and why they don't agree, then you can lay out both the benefits and the flaws of the culture you have created initially because they'll see where the flaws are, right? And thinking at it from their perspective, I thought was particularly clever. And I think that more people should think about that kind of stuff with their world building, so. Well, Sh Shattered Fox says, oh, my hubs and I deal with lax info a lot. Yep. Role play in puzzles. Thanks for the feedback, subscribe. Yeah. You're welcome. No problem. Yeah, he says counterculture was fun too. Yeah, good to see you, Shy Red Fox, by the way. Hello. Yeah, good to see you, Shy. If it takes time to get to it, I'm sure I can come up with something really fun. I just don't know. It's something really interesting that my players aren't interacting with right now. I'm really excited about the things that my house has created. Yeah. Yeah, Esau's comment understand. about why she's not doing the flash challenge. No, you don't have to. Yeah, I'm not doing the flash challenge. Yeah, no. All right, I got games to game master. I'm way too busy. Right, I just do it because, you know, if I think of something that I think would be particularly valuable for the world as I'm working on it anyway, right, I, I just, I like the challenge. I think it's fun. It gets me thinking about stuff. But I don't do it either if I don't have the time, for sure. Yeah. 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 All right. I think we've about covered it. Yep. And that's the end of our time. Yep, because this is only an hour. Mm. Uh, coming up on the channel um, this week, we have... Tomorrow, we've got Ask an Old GM. Usual time, 1 p.m. Pacific. Um, on Sunday, we have Sable's World Forge. Oh, yes. Thank you. That's one more thing I was going to discuss. Okay, so... Um, I'm finding that I'm spending more of my streams chatting than I am working. And I don't mind that necessarily because I really enjoy the community and it's a lot of fun. I find I spend my whole time chatting and not working. <laughs> Which is your goal. Yeah. <laughs> it's not my goal though. I, I, I mean, I, I do, I like it, but I also want to get some work done. So what I'm thinking is that I'm going to take a page from Writer Greg's book and I'm going to use the Pomodoro method on my Wednesday streams and focus on it being a writing stream in particular, right? Now, uh, for those who aren't familiar, 
um, but I think most of you probably are by now. It's basically, you set a time you're going to work, and nothing but the zombie apocalypse is going to interrupt you while you're working. And then you set a specific time, which is considerably shorter, that you're going to take a break. And you do not work at all in that time. You specifically, absolutely, you stop, right? If you're in the middle of a paragraph, you quit. You come back to it after the break period, right? And uh, I find that tends to be very effective. I have, I have something that does that. And this is why I brought my phone in here. Right? I have an app called Writometer that is designed to work this way. It's Can even- on Play Store? Uh, yeah, you can get it at the Play Store. Yeah. Writometer, W-R-I-T-E-O-Meter. Yeah, but I want to show it to you if I can. So, where are his, it's hidden. I know it's on here. Uh, it's probably on my writing page. Why is it that when you're in a hurry, you can never find things? It's just not fair. There it is. Okay. So, can't see it because there's too much glare. glare. But there it is booting up. Notice it has like inspiring writing quotes there. That one says, uh, we have been taught to believe that negative equals realistic and positive equals unrealistic. Susan Jeffers. Couldn't agree more. Grim for Grim's sake, I'm done with it. Right? Then the thing beneath it is my project, which was, uh, which was Brothers in Arms, which I now have to kind of shelve because I've split that one up into two different novels. Right? But you can assign a project, right? And... Right, then uh, you can also reward yourself with treats, right? For getting things done, you set like a goal, you know, and it's all right there in an app. So it's just, there's a writing log that keeps track of what you've done, where you can make notes about it. It's been a while since I wrote in here. Apparently NaNoWriMo was the last time I looked at this. So, <laughs> you know, a writing chart that gives you kind of your statistics. Um, Okay, but here's the key. Timer. That timer, once you started it, uh, will not stop. It'll scream at you if you try to stop it. Right? See, so right for 25 minutes, and then you take a break. So I'm going to use this uh, during the course of the Wednesday streams, I'm thinking. Yeah, go Hope Punk. Yes, Hope Punk. I love Hope Punk. Hope Punk, Hope Punk is, is my cool. favorite genre. Right. Although I would call it more of a mood than a genre now that I think about it, really. But yeah. So who's on if we can break? Yeah, that's right. Because it's time to quit, I guess. Yep. Or write a meter. I'll have to look that up. Yes, I recommend it highly. I, I think it's amazing. Um, you. Uh, there's a thing you can do to reward yourself for uh, certain, either a, a word count goal or a certain amount of time spent writing, and you rate them by avocados, right? That, that's the uh, award. It's a millennial thing. Yeah, that's right, because it's fun. And so, uh, you know, one avocado might be um, you get to go have a cookie, right? And uh, three or five avocados, maybe you get to take the dog for a walk and take a break, right? So... It's it's a good way to drive yourself. It's a lot of fun. So, yes. Now, what does the calendar say? Calendar says. Calendar says I probably windows open. Yeah, too many tabs. That's what it says. DM stretch is getting started according to the schedule. Is that true, DM stretch? Are you up? Or are you still lurking in the chat? Yeah, you'll do Nano Dragon Love Water. You'll do it with us. Yes, come on, do Nano. It's fun. Yeah, Dragon. Yeah. He's live. He's live. Okay. okay. So quickly before we go here, I'll just send you. If you would like to read our stuff and get our RPG material, you can get it here. Right, one dollar a month gets you all the fiction. Five dollars a month gets you all, all the, the RPG, RPG material stuff. and all the audio material. So. RPG stuff, there isn't a whole bunch of it yet, 
but this does include all the RPG material that will be coming out in the books that we are going to publish about it. Right? You will have all that for free on World Animal. That's right. Um, patrons will not have to spend a dime on our books unless they want to, because right. they'll have all the material accessible right on our World Anvil sites. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. So. Alright. Let's go read DM Stretch. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I'm always happy to, you know, just hang out with the community. Remember that the Raid Shout is prepare to be boarded because we are the Sables Privateers. Um, we'll be doing this next month on uh, the last Thursday of the month, as usual, at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard yeah. Time. Have a good day, everybody. Bye, guys. <laughs>